Story number 28 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rebecca. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story number 28. Uncle Wiggily and Kitty Cat. Well, said Uncle Wiggily as he and the black beetle went along through the woods after the rabbit's crutch had been taken away from the savage wolf. Don't you want to come along with me, Mr. Beetle, and help me look for my fortune? Indeed, I would like to very much, said the funny little insect. But the truth of the matter is that I have to go to work tomorrow, and so I can't come. Work? What work do you do? inquired Uncle Wiggily. Oh, I am going to punch holes in trolley cart transfers with my strong pincers, answered the beetle. Now, I will have to bid you goodbye, but if ever anyone takes your crutch down a hole again, send for me and I'll get it back for you. So the beetle said goodbye to the old gentleman rabbit and went his way. And Uncle Wiggily, after looking at his crutch to be sure the wolf had not bitten a piece out of it, went on looking for his fortune. "'My, it's quite lonesome going by yourself,' said the rabbit as he hopped along through the woods. "'I miss the red monkey and the grasshopper and the black beetle. "'But then they can't always be with me, so I'll have to travel on alone.' On and on he went. Sometimes in the fields he stopped to hear the birds sing, and he heard them talking among themselves about how they must soon get ready to go down south, for cold weather was coming.' That made the old gentleman rabbit feel a little sad, and he wished that he could soon go back home, where Sammy and Susie Littletail were waiting for him. "'But I can't go until I find my fortune,' he said. "'I must look harder than ever for it.' Then, sometimes, when he went through the woods, he heard the little brooks whispering to the ferns how that soon there would be ice and snow all over, with boys and girls skating and sliding downhill. Brrr. That makes me shiver, exclaimed the rabbit. I too must get ready for winter. Oh, if I could only find that gold and those diamonds, I'd go right straight home and never travel about any more. So he looked under stones and down in hollow stumps, but not a piece of gold nor a sparkling diamond could he find. Then it began to get late, and the sun was darkened behind the clouds. I wonder where I can stay tonight, thought Uncle Wiggily. I must pick out a nice big stump, fill it with leaves, and sleep in there. Well, it didn't take him long to find what he wanted, and he prepared his bed for the night. Then he built a little fire in front of the stump and cooked his supper. He ate some carrots and a turnip sandwich with peanut butter on it, and the last thing he ate was a large piece of cherry pie. Then he washed the dishes and, curling up on the soft leaves, he was soon asleep, dreaming of his little nephew and niece. Sammy and Susie. Now, about midnight, the savage alligator, who hadn't had anything to eat in a long time, started out to find something, and pretty soon he came to the stump where Uncle Wiggily was sleeping. Ah, there is a good meal for me, cried the skillery scalery creature as he reared up on the end of his double jointed tail and put his long nose down in the hollow stump. Hey, what's this? Who is it? "'Has the red monkey come back?' cried the rabbit, suddenly awake. "'I'm glad to see you, Mr. Monkey. Here is some cherry pie for you.' And then, being only half awake, Uncle Wiggily took a large piece of the pie and held it out, thinking he was giving it to the monkey. But it slipped from his hand and it fell right into the alligator's face. And the cherry juice ran down into the eyes of the skillery skillery creature and tickled him so that he sneezed, and then he ran away, for he thought the red monkey might possibly be in the stump, and the alligator was afraid the monkey might throw hot potatoes down his throat. Uncle Wiggily looked out of the stump, and by the light of the silvery moon he saw the alligator running away, and that was the first time he knew it was the skillery creature and not the monkey who had come in so suddenly. My, that was a narrow escape, cried the rabbit. It's a good thing I took that cherry pie to bed with me. I must be on the watch, for the alligator may come back. But the skillery skillery creature with the double-jointed tail didn't return. 
Though Uncle Wiggily didn't sleep very good the rest of the night on account of being so anxious and worrying so much. And in the morning, when he awakened from a little nap, the old gentleman rabbit felt very strange. He tried to get up, but he found that he couldn't. He was as dizzy as if he had been on a merry-go-round, and he felt very ill. It must have been the fright the alligator gave me, he thought. Oh dear, what shall I do? Here I am, all alone in this stump in the woods, and no one to help me. Oh, I'm a poor, forsaken old rabbit, and nobody loves me. Oh, if Sammy and Susie were only here, I'm sure. And just then there was a scratching sound outside the stump. Hark! What's that? whispered the rabbit. That must be the alligator coming back to get me. And I can't even get up to throw some cherry pie at him. Oh, if the red monkey or the black beetle would only come. Then the scratching noise sounded some more, and Uncle Wiggily was getting so frightened that he didn't know what to do. And then, all of a sudden, he saw something white at the top hole of the stump, and a voice exclaimed, Well, if there isn't my dear old Uncle Wiggily, and you are ill, I know you are. I can tell by the way your nose twinkles. Indeed, I am ill, said the poor rabbit. But who are you? For you know he couldn't see well, as his glasses had fallen off. Oh, I'm Kitty Cat, said the voice. And there, surely enough, was the little pussy girl. She had been away on her summer vacation and was just coming back to get ready for school when she happened to walk through the woods. There she heard a voice in the stump, and, going to look, she saw Uncle Wiggily. Oh, how glad I am to see you, Kitty Cat, said the rabbit. And how sorry I am to see you ill, said the pussy girl. But don't worry, I'm going to make you well. Just keep quiet. Then that brave little pussy girl scurried around and gathered some leaves from a plant called catnip. For, said Kitty, if catnip is good for cats, it must be good for rabbits. So she made some hot catnip tea and gave it to Uncle Wiggily, and in an hour he was all better and could sit up. Then Kitty made him some toast of some slices of yellow carrots on it, and he felt better still, and by noon he was as good as ever. But I don't know what I would have done only for you, Kitty Cat, said the rabbit. Thank you very much. Now I can travel on and seek my fortune. And I'll come with you, spoke Kitty Cat. So they traveled on together, and they had an adventure the next day. I'll tell you about it right away, for the next story will be of Uncle Wiggily and Jenny Chipmunk. That is, if the green trunk up in the attic doesn't go off on vacation all by itself down to Ashbury Grove and hide in the sand to scare the popcorn man. End of story number 28 Recording by Rebecca Story 29 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Michael Fascio. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris Story 29 Uncle Wiggily and Jenny Now Uncle Wiggily said Kitty Cat, as she and the old gentleman rabbit went along, the day after he had been cured by the catnip tea. You must take good care of yourself. Keep in the shade, and walk slowly, for I don't want you to get sick again. And I don't want to myself, spoke Uncle Wiggily, for I want to find my fortune. Oh, I think you will, and very soon, said Kitty. I dreamt last night of a pile of gold and diamonds, and I'm sure you will soon be rich, so that you can come back home and live with us all again. "'Where was the pile of gold which you dreamed?' asked the rabbit. "'Was it at the end of the rainbow? Because, if it was there, there's no use to think of it. I once looked there and found nothing.' "'No, it wasn't there,' said Kitty, shaking her head. "'I don't know where it was, because I was awakened before my dream was over. But I'm sure you will soon find your fortune. Now remember to walk slowly and keep in the shade.' So she and Uncle Wiggily traveled on and on. Once they came to a big hill— which they could hardly climb, and they didn't know what to do. But they happened to meet a friendly mud turtle, who was very strong and who had a large, broad shell. "'Get on my back,' said the turtle, "'and I will take you up the hill. I go slowly, but I am very sure. 
You will have time to rest yourselves while I am climbing up. So Uncle Wiggily and Kitty Cat got on the turtle's back, and in time he took them up the hill. Then, after traveling on a little farther, they came to a broad river. Oh, how shall we ever get across? said Kitty. Perhaps I can make a boat, said the rabbit. He was looking for some wood and some broad leaves with which to make a sail, when along came swimming a big goldfish. Just perch upon my back, the fish said, and I will be very glad to take you across. But you swim under water, and we will get all wet, objected Uncle Wiggily. No, I will swim with my back away up out of the water, said the goldfish, and this he did, so that the rabbit and the pussy girl were taken safely over to the other side of the river, and they never even so much as wet their eyelashes. Perhaps I may find my fortune over here, spoke Uncle Wiggily, as he hopped along after thanking the goldfish. He looked on the ground and up in the air, but no fortune could he find. There is a little house made of leaves and bark over there, said Kitty, pointing through the woods. Let us go and see who is in it. Perhaps a bear lives there, said the rabbit. It is too small for a bear's house, decided Kitty. But as they came close to it, they heard a scratching noise inside, and they thought perhaps it might be the fuzzy fox. Then, all of a sudden, they heard a voice singing this song. I sweep, I sew, I dust, I mend, from morning until night, and then I wash the plates and cups and scrub the table white. I love to make a pudding, also a pie and cake, and when I do my ironing, potatoes do I bake. Now I must hurry, hurry, to get a meal for you, and then I'll go and gather a hickory nut or two. Why, well, I know who that is, cried Kitty Cat. Ooh, asked Uncle Wiggily, making his nose twinkle like three stars and a moon on a frosty night. It's Jenny Chipmunk, cried Kitty. I just know it is. Oh, Jenny, she called. Is that you? Yes. Who is it that wants me? Asked a voice, and out from the tiny house stepped a little chipmunk girl. She had on her sweeping cap and her apron, and in one hand was a cloth, and in the other a plate she was drawing. Well, well, Jenny, you're as busy as ever, I see, exclaimed Uncle Wiggily. But are you living here? "'Hush, no,' answered Jenny Chipmunk. "'I don't live here, but in this house is a dear old lady squirrel "'who is so feeble that she can't get around and do all her work. "'So every day I come over and clean up for her and get her meals. "'Oh, I just love to work,' cried Jenny. "'I believe you,' spoke the rabbit. "'But can't we help?' "'Of course we can,' decided Kitty. "'You get some wood for the fire. "'Uncle Wiggily and Jenny and I will do the housework.' Then the rabbit and kitty went in the little house, and Jenny Chipmunk introduced them to the old lady squirrel, who had to lie down in bed most of the time. "'Oh, I am very glad to see you,' she said in her gentle voice. "'I don't know what I would do without Jenny. She is such a help, aren't you, Jenny?' But Jenny wasn't there to answer, for she had skipped out to the kitchen to finish the dishes, and she was singing away as she hurried along as happy as a grasshopper. Then Uncle Wiggily brought in a lot of wood, and with Kitty to help with the sweeping and dusting, the house was soon as neat as a piece of apple pie on a Sunday morning. "'Now we must go and gather some nuts for the old lady squirrel,' said Jenny. "'What will we carry them in?' asked Kitty. "'Oh, there's a basket for you, and Uncle Wiggily can use his valise. And as for me,' said Jenny, "'I have little pockets in each side of my cheeks, you know.' "'And it's really true. A chipmunk has little pouches or pockets, one on each side of its face.' You look the next time you see one, and notice how a chipmunk's cheeks stick out when it has a lot of nuts to carry. So the nuts were soon gathered for the old lady squirrel, and then Jenny made a cup of tea for Uncle Wiggily and Kitty. And as they sat in the house drinking it, and talking cheerfully to the old lady squirrel, all of a sudden the fuzzy old fox came along and tried to get in. But Uncle Wiggily saw him through the window and quickly shut and locked the door. "'Never mind,' cried the fox as he sat down outside and licked his lips. "'I'll wait until you come out, Mr. Rabbit.' and then I'll get you. Oh, what shall we do? cried Kitty Cat in great fright. I'll show you, said Jenny Chipmunk. So she took the big dusting brush down off the nail, and she stuck the brush out of the window, and she waved it at the fox. Waved the brush, not the window, you know. And when that fox saw the fuzzy brush waving, he thought it was the bushy tail of old dog Percival. And the fox was so afraid of dogs that then and there he gave three separate and distinct howls, and away he ran as fast as his legs would take him, and so Uncle Wiggily and Kitty Cat could come out. "'My, but you are a smart little girl, Jenny Chipmunk,' said the old gentleman rabbit. "'I never would have thought of that.' 
and Jenny sang her song again, and made a cherry pie for the rabbit, and he and Kitty traveled on, and the next day something else happened. I'll tell you about it right soon, when the story will be of Uncle Wiggily going berrying. That is, if the peanut man doesn't put a watermelon in the baby carriage, and break the wheels so the rag doll can't eat her sawdust cake. End of Uncle Wiggily and Jenny Story 30 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Michael Fascio. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris. Story 30 Uncle Wiggily Goes Burying. Well, this is a beautiful day, said Kitty Cat as she and Uncle Wiggily walked along through the woods one morning. Yes, this weather is very nice agreed the old gentleman rabbit. I ought to find my fortune today. I have been traveling after it a long time, and I am getting quite tired. Kitty Cat looked at him, and she was sorry to see that Uncle Wiggily appeared quite old. He was bending over as he walked, and he had to go very slowly, for his rheumatism was quite painful, even though he had his crutch that Nurse Jane Fuzzy Wuzzy had made for him out of a cornstalk. Poor old rabbit, thought the pussy girl. I hope that he finds his fortune soon or it will not be of much use to him. I must look as hard as I can. So as they went along, Kitty Cat looked under all the stones and behind the bushes and down in hollow stumps. And once, when she lifted up a stone with her claws, she saw something glittering under it. Oh, here is a diamond, she cried. But it was only a piece of glass. And a little later, Uncle Wiggily saw something shining under a big log. He cried out, Oh, joy, I've found some gold but it was only a shining piece of tin. They were both much disappointed, but they kept on, still searching. At last they came to a house that was built just on the edge of a deep, dark, dismal wood, and there was some smoke coming from the chimney of this house. "'I'm going there and ask if they know where I can find my fortune,' said Uncle Wiggily. "'Better not,' spoke Kitty Cat. "'There may be a wolf or a fox in there. Better not.' So Uncle Wiggily looked carefully on the ground all about the little house, and then he said, no, Kitty Cat, a fox or a wolf can't live in here, or I could see the marks of their feet in the mud. I think a man or a woman lives in that house, and I'm going to knock on the door, for they surely will be kind to us. So, with the pussy girl following behind, Uncle Wiggily went up to the door of the little house and knocked. Rat-a-tat-tat! Ha! Tat. Huh, who is there? asked a quivering, quavering voice. It is I! Uncle Wiggily Longears, the old gentleman rabbit, and I am looking for my fortune, he said. Then the door suddenly opened, and there stood a little old woman, in a green dress, and she had such a long nose and such a long chin that they almost touched, and if she had been strong enough she could have cracked a nut between them. Oh, that's an old witch, cried Kitty Cat. Nonsensicalness, exclaimed Uncle Wiggily. There are no such things as witches. Besides, it isn't polite to call names, Kitty Cat. "'Oh, I'm sorry,' said the pussy girl, looking at her tail. "'That's all right,' said the old lady kindly, and she smiled. And when she did this she wasn't at all bad-looking, but instead very nice. "'Lots of people think I'm a witch,' she said, "'and they won't come near me. But I'm not, and I love boys and girls and animals. "'I am so old, however, that I can't go very far from home.' and I would like to go off in the woods and get some berries to make a berry pie. But, alas, and alack a day, I cannot. But what was it you wanted, Uncle Wiggily? I wanted to know if you could tell me where to find my fortune, said the rabbit. Yes, answered the old lady in the green dress. I think I can tell you where to find your fortune. If you will travel on for three days more, you will come to a little hill. Go up this hill, and down the other side, and there, at the bottom, you will find your fortune. Oh, joy! cried the gentleman rabbit. How lovely! exclaimed Kitty Cat. Oh, how glad I am! Let's start off at once, Uncle Wiggily. No, not at once, said the old gentleman rabbit. First I must do a kindness to this good old lady. I heard you say you would like some berries, he went on. So I will go and get them. "'And I will come also,' said Kitty Cat. "'It is very kind of you,' spoke the old lady, with the long nose and the pointed chin. So she gave them a basket in which to put the berries, and away went Uncle Wiggily and the pussy girl. 
Soon they came to where there was a whole lot of bushes, and they began picking the berries. The basket was almost full, and the rabbit was wondering if the lady would give him some of the berry pie after she made it, when, all of a sudden, there was a rustling in the bushes, and out sprang a savage wolf. Aha! he growled, as he showed his sharp teeth. Now I have you both. Oh, what a good meal I will have! Oh, please do not eat us, begged the rabbit. I am just about to find my fortune. Can't you wait until after that? No, growled the wolf. Then he crouched down, ready for a spring. Uncle Wiggily and Kitty Cat were too frightened to move. They looked all around for help, but all they could see were the berry bushes. And one bush seemed redder than the others. In fact, it was as red as red ink, and as the rabbit looked at it, this bush seemed to move. Here I come, cried the wolf, and he jumped up into the air. But as he did so, the very red bush seemed to leap also. And then this bush grabbed the wolf by his tail, swung him around and around, and tossed him away up in the top of a tall tree. "'There, I'll teach you to play tricks on Uncle Wiggily,' cried a voice. And then the red bush came over to the rabbit, and instead of being a bush, it was the red monkey, and he had come along just in time to save the rabbit and the pussy. You see, he looked so much like a berry bush as he crouched down that the wolf didn't know him, and neither did Uncle Wiggily. "'Well, this is a joyful surprise,' cried the rabbit, as he and Kitty Cat thanked the red monkey. Oh, "'I'm glad to see you once more.' Then the wolf ran howling away through the woods, and the monkey helped the rabbit and the pussy girl to fill the basket with berries, and they took them to the old lady, who made a pie as big as the wash basin. And the next day the rabbit started off after the gold and diamonds. And, in case the lead pencil doesn't crawl up in the white wall and make a funny picture of a man riding on an elephant, I'll tell you next about Uncle Wiggily finding his fortune. End of Uncle Wiggily Goes Burying Story 31 of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Michael Fascio. Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris Story 31 Uncle Wiggily's Fortune the little old lady in the green dress, whose nose and chin nearly touched, was very glad to get the berries which Uncle Wiggily and Kitty Cat gathered. She was very sorry that the wolf had frightened them, but she thought it was just fine of the red monkey to come along when he did. "'And I just wish you could have seen him toss the wolf over the treetops by his tail,' said the old gentleman rabbit. "'It was as good as going to the circus.' "'And for doing such a trick, the red monkey can have two pieces of my berry pie,' spoke the little old woman in the green dress. And that red monkey was very, very thankful, and he ate the two pieces of pie, even down to the last drop of juice. Of course the rabbit gentleman and kitty cat had some pie, too, and after they had eaten their share and had washed their faces and paws, they stayed at the house of the little old woman all night. For I want Uncle Wiggily to be nice and rested so he can start off after his fortune tomorrow, she said. Well, the next morning the rabbit gentleman got ready to go. The old lady with the green dress filled his valise full of good things to eat, including some berry pie. For there were no more cherries now, you know. Then with Kitty Cat on one side of him and the red monkey on the other side, Uncle Wiggily set off. Remember called the old lady, as she said goodbye. You must travel straight on for three days, and you needn't stop on the way to look for your fortune, for you won't find it. Just keep on, and at the end of the third day you will come to a hill. Go up the hill, and down the other side, and you will then come into your fortune, and I hope you will live for a good many years to enjoy it. Thank you so much exclaimed the rabbit. It hardly seems possible that I'm going to be rich after all my travels. What kind of a fortune will it be? Oh, you must wait and see, said the kind old lady. Well, the rabbit and the pussy girl and the red monkey traveled on and on. The first day they came to a big mountain, and the monkey wanted to climb up it to see if there were any coconut trees growing on the top. No, Uncle Wiggily told him. We must keep straight on the level road until we come to the hill. 
and it is a good thing they didn't climb that mountain, for on top lived a big giant, who had a big club, and he might have hit the red monkey with it. Mind, I'm not saying for sure, but that might have happened, you know. So the three friends travelled on and on, and at the second day they came to where there was a big ball of blue yarn beside a little lake. It was a nice, soft ball of yarn, such as kittens play with when Grandma is knitting warm mittens for the winter. "'Oh, I must stop and play with that ball of yarn,' said Kitty Cat. "'No,' said the rabbit. "'You must not do that, for the old lady said we were to keep straight on for three days.' And it is a good thing Kitty Cat didn't roll the ball, for inside of it was a big rat, and he might have bitten the little pussy girl. Mind, I'm not saying for sure, but that might have happened. Now this is the third day, spoke Uncle Wiggily when they got up one morning after having slept in a hollow stump. By nightfall we ought to come to the hill, and on the other side will be my fortune. Oh, how glad I am! So they kept on and on, stopping for dinner in a nice shady place, and toward evening they came to the hill. "'There it is!' cried the rabbit as he hurried up it. "'Oh, I can hardly wait until I get to the other side!' Up he went, and up went the red monkey, and up went Kitty Cat, and on the way the bad fuzzy fox sprang out from the bushes and tried to catch them, but Uncle Wiggily tickled him with his crutch and made him sneeze and fall down the hill. Then they came to the top of the hill. The sun was just setting in the clouds, and they were all colored golden and violet and purple. And, oh, it was beautiful. Uncle Wiggily came to a stop. On one side was the red monkey, and on the other the pussy girl. The rabbit rubbed his eyes. Then he took off his glasses and polished them on his handkerchief. Then he looked down the hill. Why, why, exclaimed Uncle Wiggily, there must be some mistake. I don't see any gold or diamonds. And this place, why, it's the very place I started away from so many weeks ago. There is where I live. There is where Sammy and Susie Littletail live. That's the tree where Johnny and Billy Bushytail live. And there is the pond where Alice and Lulu and Jimmy Wibblewobble, the ducks, live. This is home. There can't be a fortune here. Oh, how disappointed he felt. The sun sank lower behind the clouds and made them more golden and green and purple. Then out from their homes ran the rabbit children, and the squirrel brothers, and the duck children, and Petey, and Jackie Bow Wow, and Bully the Frog, and his brother, and Dotty, and Munchy Trot, and Buddy, and Bright Eyes Pig, and all the others. Oh, here is Uncle Wiggily! Our Uncle Wiggily has come back! they cried, leaping about in joy. Oh, how glad we are to see you! Happy, happy welcome! You are rich, Uncle Wiggily. Rich, very rich. Rich, said the rabbit, rubbing his eyes and trying to stand up while all his friends gathered around him. But I don't understand. The little old lady in the green dress said I would find my fortune here, but I don't see it. Let me explain said Sammy Littletail. Do you see that field of cabbage, Uncle Wiggily? And the rabbit boy pointed to it. Yes, said the rabbit. I see the field. There are 17,256,903 cabbages there, said Sammy. And they are all yours. And do you see that field of turnips? Yes, said Uncle Wiggily, as he looked down the hill. I see them. There are 19,433,866 turnips, said Sammy, and they are all yours. And do you see that field of carrots? I do, said Uncle Wiggily, but he couldn't see so very far as tears of joy were in his eyes. There are 100,823,999.5 carrots in that field, said Sammy. Jilly Longtail the mouse had the half-carrot because she was ill. But all the rest are yours, and you are the richest rabbit in the world, the very richest. There is your fortune. You can sell the turnips and carrots and cabbages and have forty eleven barrels of gold. But, but I don't understand, said Uncle Wiggily as he tried to hug all his friends at once. It was this way, said Sammy. 
When you were gone, we all planted things in your garden and fields for you, and we took care of them, hoeing and watering them, until they grew as never carrots or turnips or cabbages grew before. So now you have come back to us, and you are rich. And it was true. After traveling almost around the earth in search of his fortune, Uncle Wiggily came back to find it right at home. And that's the way it often happens in this world. Well, you can imagine how surprised he was. He hugged and kissed all his friends, and then he went into his old house with Sammy and Susie Littletail, and when he had sold the cabbages and carrots and turnips for many barrels of gold, there he lived for many, many years, as happy an old gentleman rabbit as you could find in a day's journey. And though his rheumatism bothered him at times, it couldn't be helped. And he gave all his friends as much money as they wanted, and they all had good times together, and lots of fun. And every once in a while Uncle Wiggily would treat everybody to strawberry ice cream cones with cabbage or turnip sauce on. And now I have come to the end of this book. But I still have some more stories about the old gentleman rabbit in my typewriter, in case you would like to hear them. And I'm going to put them in another volume to be called Uncle Wiggily's Automobile. In that machine he had the most surprising adventures of which you ever heard. Why, once the doodle-oodle-lum got twisted around the tinkerum tankerum and again the noodle oodle lum wouldn't go, and he had to give it a drink of molasses. And again the snicker snooze cum got the toothache. But Uncle Wiggily didn't mind, and he traveled many miles in his auto. I'll tell you all that happened, so don't worry, but go to sleep, and in the morning the sun may be shining. So I'm going to say goodbye for a little while, and I wish you all happy dreams. The End End of Uncle Wiggily's Fortune by Howard R. Garris